Welcome, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for coming. My name is Rob Sleemaker. I'm the founder of Vasa Incorporated. We've been uh, in business for 24 years now, so we're pretty, uh, pretty excited about that. And I'm really um, proud to have the privilege to know these gentlemen here, and uh, even more um, honored that they have used Vasa products over the years and uh, have used them and discovered ways to use them far beyond anything we ever imagined when we developed these products. And those are some of the things we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to be asking them questions about how they use Vasa products to integrate into their programs for teaching swim technique, for uh, developing specific strength and power, and also when they've got an athlete that is injured, can't get into the water, but otherwise is healthy in the upper body and can still do conditioning, but how do they, how do they meet that challenge using our products and other products? I don't want you to just talk about Vasa, but how do you integrate all of this together? Because I'm sure many of you coaches are wondering, you know, if you have our products, how do you use them most effectively? If you don't have our products, uh, but have a need, and maybe, maybe this will show you how they can uh, benefit your program. So again, welcome. I want to introduce the coaches on the panel. Uh, first up is Gary Hall Sr. To, here to my left. Uh, coach at the race club. I'm sure many of you people uh, know who he is and his son, Gary Jr. Dick Schulberg next, Germ famous coach from Germantown Academy. And I have to say a quick story about Dick. Dick was one of the three coaches who first discovered the Vasa trainer. This is in 1990, I think, or 89 or 90. We, and North Thornton, Dick Schulberg, and Richard Quick came up to our booth, and I knew nothing about the swim business or swim coaching business and didn't even know who they were. And they started jumping up and down, all excited about what the Vasa trainer was and what it, some of the things that it did. And, and uh, of course, come to find out later when I was looking through the program, I found out who they were. So I got pretty excited once I found out who they were. So thanks, Dick, for all your support over the years. Matt Credits is next, University of Tennessee, and uh, Matt has um, developed some very interesting and valuable uh, technique DVDs, and uh, we're fortunate enough that he used the Vasa Trainer as a teaching prop in some of those DVDs, but I highly recommend his DVDs. If you haven't heard of them, check them out through Championship Productions. Andrei Vorontsov, national team coach from Russia, and... PhD physiologist, right? No. Uh, sports science. Yeah. Sports, sports science, yeah. 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 And Jack Fabian from uh, Keene State College and uh, father of Eva Fabian, open water swimmer champion. And Gennady Sokolavas, who worked with US, PhD exercise physiologist, worked with USA Swimming for many, many years, has done just vast amounts of, of testing and quantifying what people are doing with swimming. and. Very innovative guy, too. Lots of great ideas for both products and um, uh, you know, analyzing what people are doing in the water with their techniques. So welcome. Thank you guys for coming. So why don't we start with the, one of the first questions that, that um, you know, comes to our mind. How have you been able to um, use the Vasa trainer or the Vasa ergometer for uh, teaching technique, teaching form or correcting technique problems. And it doesn't matter to me who wants to go first and talk about that. We also have an athlete who can demonstrate for you if you need to. Matt, you want to sure. jump in on that one? Can we get the athlete? Sure. Charles, yeah. come, on, come on over, Charles. Do you want the forearm cuffs on there? Yeah, he could put those on. I think Matt should do that. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff was a good demonstrator last time. Why don't some of you come in and sit on the yeah. floor? Yeah, come on. Come on. on. Right up here in the front, there's plenty of room. Plenty of room. Um, I'm just going to do the, is that okay to do the yeah, okay. pulleys instead? I, I was a volunteer Let's assistant in, in 1990 for, uh, for Richard go Quick <coughs> when uh, he, he bought, I think, five or six Vasa trainers to put just, up on the, um, on, on the pool deck at Stanford. And, um, and I was just starting coaching, and so it, it, the machine has essentially been, I, I didn't realize that it was brand new other than I had never used it, but the machine was, was really, uh, has been a, a part of 
the, the teaching that I've done for years, and uh, I'm not going to take too much time here, but I, I just want to show a simple exercise because um, the, the catch position, I think, in freestyle and butterfly breaststroke is, is one of the most difficult positions to teach in the water. There's some real s subtleties, obviously, in, in getting the fingertips, the forearm, the shoulder, uh, the scap, all in the right place. And so to teach in the water can be very difficult. To teach it on land is, is easy when you have, um, w when you can communicate with the athlete and you can manipulate them, their, their arms and, and, uh, and body position. So what, just a very simple exercise we do is, is essentially create the catch position. And, and I, I asked, um, or Rob actually saw that we, we sort, uh, made some, some cuffs to put on the forearms because I, I feel like that's where the, the center of pressure is. That's kind of where we want to balance the pressure through most of the stroke. And so why don't you go ahead and start moving through just some fly pulls and do it really slowly. And, and, and this is basically what we're doing for the first several weeks of, uh, of training on land and go at about a quarter of that speed. What's your name? Charles. Charles, thank you. Really, no, that's too fast. Really, really slowly. Okay, and so we, we'll do this really slowly and you, you essentially can't go slowly enough because at every point here, we're, he's, uh, Charles is creating some, some uh, muscle memory or neuromuscular connections and, and with the machine we can vary the resistance, we can, we can jack up the, uh, the height, we can add another band on the back and at some point he's going to start to fail. And that failure is going to look very familiar to all of you. He's going to go to a position that is stronger in this particular plane. Why don't you go ahead and simulate failure by dropping your elbows. Okay. Well, that's too much. You didn't fail that badly. <laughs> <laughs> right right really there. Okay. So, so here we can say, all right, Charles, ro rotate your fingertips downward. Get that elbow forward more. Okay. And continue. Okay. And, and. However you want to teach it, you can have them have, uh, have him bring his, finger, his hands closer underneath. Um, we like to have them finish with their fingertips in the back. And you can see that when, when Charles dropped his elbows, the cuffs slipped down to his wrist. So that's a, that's a sign that, uh, that we failed. We want the fingertips down here, elbows a little bit more in it, towards the back here. So we can do a lot of manipulation. And, and if he moves through it really slowly, again, every little position that he's going to be in is uh, he's creating a, a memory or creating a kind of a, a snapshot for his body and and we can do I think some really good coaching there um, so that this is one of the ways that we've used it to teach you know I want to just add to that again I mentioned about Matt's uh, DVDs but you know, as you've already witnessed Matt's an excellent um, educator and can really create the, the mental images for what for what he wants the athletes to do and and when I watched the DVDs, I, I just thought they were outstanding. So as a follow-up to this talk, if you can, you can look for those, they're really great.